Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. I was truly inspired by Steve Jobs' uh, video. And uh, the reason I bring it up is because <coughs> I was taking notes throughout the entire session for my final remarks. And I noticed that he had some notes. And then I thought, well, if he did it, my gosh, who am I to try to make it out of memory? <laughs> so uh, I think that if anybody has taken a bad rap today, is the immune system. Everybody has said horrible things about people, <laughs> <laughs> cells, but I believe in the case of diabetes, it is really pretty well deserved. And that's the way we started the day today, by showing how basically in diabetes there are two types of cells, the bad cells, and they are so bad they are, kill, they are called killer cells, and there are other good cells called regulatory cells that protect the insulin producing cells from the killing that is taken, uh, being done by these killer cells. So it was nice to see that diabetes is a disease that involves two systems, the immune system and the endocrine system represented by the insulin producing cells. And we learned that if everything is okay, there is a adequate balance between the good and the bad cells, and when the bad cells predominate for reasons that we don't know, then people develop diabetes. And this is important because most likely by trying to figure out what breaks the balance, we might be able to come up with therapeutics that might be able to inhibit or prevent the development of diabetes. Then along those lines, uh, we had a talk about the upcoming uh, trials with uh, vaccines to prevent insulin. We heard that uh, most likely sometime around the middle of this century, perhaps there will be a vaccine for the prevention of diabetes. And I think that there is a very good uh, chance that uh, in this running between finding a cure for diabetes and trying to prevent diabetes, uh, we might be able to prevent it before we find a cure, especially by the reasons that you heard, once again, implicating the immune system. Uh, as we went along, it was very interesting to see that we put a lot of emphasis on the cure for diabetes, and it was gratifying to hear somebody like Steve Edelman showing how in the last 30 years the treatment of insulin has been completely revolutionized. Matter of fact, I, I saw myself in one of his talks represented by when he was a young kid. Uh, you might remember he went to a Jocelyn Clinic, and there is a picture of all these young clinic uh, researchers, and those were my peers. Those were the guys I trained with. So I was looking at Stephen and I said, my God, time is really going on. Now, <clears throat> then we move into how are these insulin producing cells produced? And that was very important because learning how they become, uh, a cell becomes an uh, adult uh, able to respond to glucose, then is gave us the clues necessary to move the research into the couple of talks that we heard on stem cells. This is one of the things that I do. By the way, I forgot to tell you that I am the co-director of the Pediatric Diabetes Research Center at the uh, University of California here in San Diego. And uh, our laboratories pretty much do what most people talk about today, except the pigs. Oh, no, I'm sorry. David works with pigs and the sensor. But uh, the goal of our uh, research center is to find a cure for diabetes. So we're very actively involved in stem cells, for instance, so in beta cell replication, in pancreatic regeneration, etc. But I wanted to bring the stem cells back again because I found a really nice analogy with a recent experience I had with my grandson. I recently became a grandson. I'm sorry, a grandfather. <laughs> I'm so excited with him that one of the nicest experiences I ever had in my life is nine months now. And all he does I went to New York for a week, he bubbled, and bubble, and I bubbled back at him, and I was thinking all the time, I wonder what is he trying to tell me? And then I came back to my lab, and I was looking at some stem cells, and I said, this is just like my grandson. 
these cells are trying to tell me something. I know that as my grandson, one day he will grow and become an independent person and decide to be something in life. And this is what the stem cells are doing. They are at the stage where he is. They bubble, no idea when they will become independent, which in the case of a cell will be able to cure a disease, hopefully diabetes. So the message is that it's going to take time and patience, but we certainly are learning a lot of cell biology by doing experiments with these cells. Coming back to a more real situation, we heard the talks on transplantation. I was truly amazed of how much the field of pancreas transplantation and islet transplantation has advanced. Several years ago, with the support of uh, David Winkler, who is here in the audience, we started uh, what we hope to be a, an eyelid transplant program, but we really, it became so expensive and so complicated to get the pancreas and stuff like that that we gave it up and went into like things like stem cells. But so it was, it's wonderful to see that the field has progress. It's wonderful to be able to tell a person with diabetes there is a cure for diabetes and the cure is pancreas transplantation. And, and if the pancreas is not available, then the islet uh, transplant could be another possibility. And it was very gratifying to hear that there are so many new agents that are able to suppress the rejection of the glands or the islets. And uh, I think certainly this is going to change the uh, outcome of uh, diabetes. Now, if Dr. Herring, who just left, uh, is uh, correct and... Uh, if uh, the experiments that he's doing are being able to be replicated, there is no question that pigs are going to become a, very much a reality. And then if we put this together with the study of the encapsulation, then uh, the prognosis is going to be extremely good and it will give us a lot of time to work with these stem cells to see if someday they can really replace even the pigs. Although success with the pig cells is going to have a significant impact on the stem cell field that is having a lot of difficulties as far as the technical and the clinical application. So uh, I think that it has been a wonderful day. We have all learned a lot. Uh, the speakers have been truly fantastic. Uh, we have to maintain uh, uh, real issues with what is gonna come soon and what is gonna take some time. For instance, the capsule story is beautiful, but when you think that the number of cells that you put into a little animal is very limited, mice or rat, and we apply that to, to man, the, the scaling up is a humongous problem. So uh, it, it might be that it will take probably more time for that technology to be applicable to humans, but in the meanwhile, hopefully the pharmaceutical uh, agencies and uh, biotech companies we come up with compounds that will facilitate these cell transplants as a cure for diabetes. Again, thank you so much for coming. And uh, hi, Salma, in case you are watching. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.